Well, this is the second Sunday after Easter. We know that Easter is the most significant and powerful season of the Christian calendar, and we love celebrating Easter. Many Christians who don't come to church regularly come to church on Easter Sunday. So what is so significant about Easter? Do you see any change in your own lives after Easter? Well, actually, that was a question that I asked myself. What I'm trying not to do is taking Easter as if it is a routine event of the church calendar, something that comes and goes. And today's text in Acts is about those people who did not take Easter as a routine event in their lives. Do you remember the story of the disciples uh, two weeks ago? They were a bunch of fearful cowards. When they saw their teacher being arrested, persecuted, and finally nailed to the cross, they did not have power to do anything. Peter even denied Jesus, and the disciples all ran away. But in today's text, in Acts, look at what happened to the disciples. It's a witness to the transformation of the disciples after Easter. These disciples were arrested for preaching about Jesus. They were put in prison. They were flogged, and their lives were all threatened, just like Jesus. But none of them ran away. Actually, they became so bold that the authorities who arrested them were the fearful people. They were afraid that the crowd may turn against them. When the disciples were released after being flogged, the text today says, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of Jesus' name. Can you picture that kind of courage in yourself? Well, these disciples were unstoppable. No power on earth could stop them from sharing the good news of Jesus. I believe this is what life after Easter should look like. Becoming bold, becoming free to share our faith, our trust, and our love in God by doing the Jesus way. In the past week, as I watched the news, I was really troubled. I was desperate to experience this power of Easter as the world around us was engulfed in the threats of war. People were in fear, and we were seeing signs of destruction. I got calls, phone calls, and email from friends and family in USA, and I'm sure many of you have also received those calls. And they were asking, are you all okay there in Korea? We had people canceling out from our summer program of peace seminar, those of them who are coming from USA. When I watched all the weapons of destruction on display shown on TV, and when government leaders on all sides telling us that we will be protected well by those weapons, I had to wonder about what peace and power really means. The world leaders were showing them off a symbol of power and of peace. Don't you think that we human beings sometimes are crazy to use these weapons as a means to peace? I felt that someone, somewhere, has to break this cycle of using military power as a means to peace. And I believe that someone, that someone, 
should be one who knows the power of resurrection, the power of Easter. God sent Jesus as the Prince of Peace, and God raised Jesus from death so that we all should choose life over death. Those weapons are not signs of peace to me. To me, God is God of life. Every Easter, I'm reminded of a, a gift, an Easter gift, a friend of mine gave me when I was uh, ministering a church in USA. This friend gave me a small plastic container that was about this big, but it was clear plastic. And that plastic had dark dirt in it. I could not see what's inside. But what's inside is similar to what you see on the screen. She told me that there is a small caterpillar, and the dark stuff in there is ground leaves. She says that it will become a butterfly in a few weeks, and I get to watch it grow. Well, I was not very impressed with that gift because I do not like worms. So I brought it home and just put it on my bookshelf, and I totally forgot about it. About a week later, I happened to notice that bottle, and I remembered the gift. So I looked inside. Well, I did not see the caterpillar. It was all dried up and the caterpillar was dead, so I threw it away in the trash. So later that day, I called up the friend and I said, you know, I'm very sorry. The gift that you gave me, I killed it, so I threw it away. And then my friend said, oh no, it's not dead. It has become a cocoon. It is on its way to becoming a butterfly. Just follow the instructions there. Of course, I forgot all about the instruction. Well, fortunately, the trash can was still in my kitchen, so I went home and took the bottle out and left it on the shelf again. This time, I looked into the bottle for several days in a row, but there was nothing going on, and I was so sure that it was dead. The instruction says that about after two weeks, I should put it in a big bottle and put some sugar water in it so that when the butterfly comes out of the cocoon, it can feed on it. Well, two weeks later, when I saw nothing, and I was kind of sure that it was dead, I put it in a big kimchi bottle and I put some sugar water. I just poured it into the bottle and I left it there, and I did not see any change. Then one day when I came home, I was so shocked. The sugar water turned red, and there was a dead-looking butterfly inside the bottle. Looking into carefully, what I found out was that the wings of the butterfly was red, and that's why the sugar water turned red. I should have put a small amount of sugar water carefully, but I had so carelessly just put a whole can of sugar water into the bottle. And so I think the butterfly kind of drowned, and I was so sure that it was dead. So I carefully took the butterfly out and of course, the wings were kind of stuck in the sugar water. But the butterfly was moving. It was not dead. So I took it outside, put it on my hand, and I said, okay, you can fly. After flapping wings for a few times, it flew away from me. What a miracle that was for me. It really was an Easter moment for me because it was dead 
and came to life. Actually, it was dead a few times because I almost killed it a few times, but it was alive. I will never forget the lessons I learned from that gift of Easter. The first lesson I learned is that what looks dead in my sight is not always death. The process of life goes through transformation, and at times, in some moments, it looks like it is dead because it's not moving. But inside that cocoon, there is an incredible process of making the parts of the butterfly, including the beautiful colors of its wings. Never ignore those moments that look like dead moments for it is a way to life. Now I can see why Jesus never gave up on his disciples who denied him, who left him, who ignored him, and ran away from him. It was because of those moments of so-called failure and of fear that they were able to be transformed from fear to courage at Easter. Even in our own lives, we dread being in that state of not moving, when we are sick, when we fail in something, or when we are lonely. We sometimes even feel that we are useless. We do not know what to do next, and we get stuck there. We try to get out of it, but we dig deeper and deeper into our own hole. But I want to see that those moments as cocoon moments. It looks like we are not going anywhere, yet it is a very important stage for the next step, for building up the wings to fly. When you get out of those moments, you will clearly see the value of where you have been. Those moments are the ones worth, worth sharing as the source of power in our lives. And that leads us to the second lesson I learned. Be fully present in every moment in life. There's the egg stage, the lava stage, the cocoon stage, and the butterfly stage. And each stage has its role in building up character of who we are to become. God does not waste life for nothing. God is not going to waste our own lives. We are the ones giving up on ourselves. And when we give up on ourselves, even for a moment, Ultimately, we are giving up on God. I learned through my own experience how impatient I am. I like things to happen in my own time. I'm so oblivious to the life-building process around me. The caterpillar had its timeline, the cocoon had its own timeline, and the butterfly had its own timeline. If we were fully present to the season of Lent, the season of suffering, the season of agony, the season of loneliness, of betrayal, and desperate longing for God's presence in our lives, as Jesus did, we will fully know the power of resurrection. You know, without death, there is no resurrection. Without letting go, there is no new life. It's just the way it is, and there is no other way around it. And that's why each moment in life, wherever you are right now, it is precious time in life. It is because of today that we are going to have tomorrow. And that brings us to my third lesson I learned from the butterfly. At the end of that process to life, we give up life in order to gain new life. That butterfly threw away, flew away from me. 
I learned later that as soon as the butterfly flies away from coming out of the cocoon, it flies away to find a mate and it starts to give birth to the eggs. They have very short lifespan and so they do what they're born to do. I do not own the butterfly. It has a life of its own. If I kept the butterfly, it would not be able to give new life. Life after Easter is to give away our lives so that we will give birth to new life. All life comes because someone gave life to it. Babies, puppies, plants, all of it. It is very precious. And that new life came from someone who gave life to it. Well, you see my butterfly on my stole today. When I talked about nurturing this butterfly in my church that I was serving at that time, I think the parish nurse were very happy that the minister finally is growing up a little bit. So when I left that church, they made this for me. So I treasure this, remembering almost having killed the butterfly because I was doing it my way. After Easter, the transformed disciples went all over to preach the good news of Jesus so that others may have new life. And in turn, by doing that, they received new life every day, a life of boldness, life of courage, life of hope, life of power, and life of freedom to spread the gospel. The communion that we take every Sunday at the Lord's table is a reminder of that power of new life. It is the living presence of Jesus coming into our own lives. Now the second week of Easter is going to be third week of Easter and on and on. The world around us is in desperate need for new life. The world around us, North Korea, South Korea, USA, Japan, China, the governments, the military leaders, will not be preaching about Jesus as the Prince of Peace. That's our job, the resurrection people of the church. Please join that group that the disciples of Jesus had created through the church. We have more powerful weapon than what the world shows us, the weapon of love and peace from God. In preparing this sermon, I made a new commitment this week. Yes, I will preach peace at all times, in all places, and this peace should start in me and with me. So I invite you, my brothers and sisters, that as Easter people, you will take on being the ambassadors of peace in your own lives because Jesus came to your life as the Prince of Peace. And through that, you will receive the gift of new life every day. And may our lives together contribute to peacemaking in our world. Amen.